Are you feeling a bulge and having difficulty pooping? Well, I can tell you what it is and what you can do to get some relief. Stay tuned for more pooping information. I am Jeff McQuarrie, a Tennessee urogynecologist. If your prolapse and incontinence problems are dominating your life, take back control by solving your problems with solutions from my channel, Women's Healthcare Answers. And in this video, we're going to talk about posterior vaginal defects. That's fancy terminology for different problems that can happen in the backside of the vaginal area. The most common is what's called a rectocele. And please stay till the end for information on what types of symptoms you can have with a rectocele and what things you can do right now to get some relief. Well, a rectocele is a protrusion or bulging of the rectum into the vagina. Now, a rectocele is not nearly as common as other types of defects, such as the uterus, vagina, or bladder falling, but it's quite prevalent and commonly found in combination with those other problems of the pelvis. Since it is not uncommon for these prolapse problems to occur together, this can certainly make surgery a more complicated repair process. But today, we're going to really be talking about what a rectocele causes, how you know you might have one, and non-surgical ways in which you can deal with these type of problems. In my next video, we'll talk more about the surgical treatments for posterior vaginal defects, so be sure to watch that video as well. Well, it's very important to understand that when there's a bulge from the vaginal area, there could be a lot of different problems, including the upper vagina and bladder falling down. Sometimes it's very difficult for you having these problems to really even know what is going on down there. Now, this is very important to note that uh, this may not be just a rectocele. It can be more complicated than that. And that's why doctors such as me, being a urogynecologist or a urologist with special training in pelvic floor reconstruction, do understand these types of defects. It certainly can be a combination of problems such as the rectum bulging, the small bowel pushing down from above, uh, which is a, actually a hernia, or even the sigmoid colon, which is the next part of the colon even prolapsing. The simple fact is that it is very hard sometimes in the office to really know what's going on, and it can be very difficult to distinguish between these types of problems except with lots of experience and suspicion. So your doctor must be experienced enough to know what they're getting into if they're going to fix these type of problems. But today we're mostly talking about non-surgical ways of being able to deal with these problems. So why does a posterior defect or rectocele even happen? Well, you know, the number one cause of pelvic floor defects is history of vaginal delivery. A lot of damage from that. But certainly also if you have a high BMI, so you're overweight, a history of a lot of heavy straining or lifting, and also constipation issues. These can lead to prolapse, especially if there was weakness there already. These are the problems that are most common with aging and menopause due to thinning of the vaginal tissues. So once that happens, very common uh, as uh, you get older. And when those strong barriers uh, that should be holding back the rectum are just weak. So if you suspect you may have a rectocele, what type of symptoms might you have? Well, number one, you may feel that you can't finish a bowel movement without straining or pushing down there. And we call this splinting. This is applying manual pressure to the vaginal area or the perineum in between the vagina and rectum. So this is the process of reducing that rectocele in order to be able to have a bowel movement. Not only uh, is that a method to function better in having a bowel movement, but it's also helpful in decreasing the risk of worsening from straining too much. The second thing that you will feel is pelvic pressure. It's just a lot of pressure down there all the time, and especially if you're unable to complete a bowel movement, you may even feel that the rectum is full and pushing up into the vaginal area because you can't get it out. You may feel a bulge down there that correlates with that pressure. And I commonly see patients who have a lot of lower backache associated with that as well. So the third issue is constipation. So not only can constipation actually lead to these type of problems, you now have worse constipation because you have a rectocele. And the other issue that I often uh, have patients complain to me about is that they feel so uncomfortable with sex. It's just kind of that feeling of blockage down there and it makes them uh, uncomfortable and obviously very unpleasurable for them. Often uh, their spouse or significant other doesn't really understand a rectocele. 
And it's difficult for males to understand that female anatomy anyway. And so they're often kind of clueless about this. And that can make it challenging in the bedroom. The last symptom that I'm going to talk about is leaking of stool, which is called fecal incontinence. Talk about a difficult problem to talk about. It's very difficult uh, for many patients to even try to talk to me about this, um, but it's not difficult for me to listen. So if you go to a doctor who is understanding, uh, tell them these kind of things and they can help you work on what may actually be the problem causing your leakage. A lot of times this can be more complicated problem and is leading to a lot of weakness of the muscles around the anal area. That's very weak, or especially if there's stool just sitting in a pocket in that posterior vagina, then those are the risk factors for having leakage of stool. So the stool is always sitting there. So the most important thing is that you need to, as I said to before, go to a doctor who understands your anatomy and situation and is going to be able to evaluate you accordingly. So a gynecologist typically is going to take a history of these problems that we just talked about, but on physical examination, they're gonna look at the defect and the prolapse that you have in the vaginal area. On physical examination, you're typically going to be examined with your legs elevated and your pelvis open, and this is called lithotomy position. It's very important to understand that when you've been standing all day and on your feet and lifting and doing all those types of things, just normal life stuff, that's when you really feel a lot of pressure in your pelvis. So the problem is typically happens when you're standing up, but the doctor's going to examine you lying down. So sometimes it's difficult uh, for the doctor to actually see the extent of your problem. We may have to do using a speculum, having you bear down and cough to see what's actually happening to you. We can pull up the bladder and look specifically at the posterior vaginal wall and that rectal wall. But most of the time with experience, we're able to get a good idea of how dysfunctional this is for you and what appears to be the problem. It is not uncommon also for the perineum, which is that area in between the rectum and the vagina, to bulge down. And that makes things a little bit more complicated and needs to be taken into consideration. The difficult part uh, uh, for you on physical examination uh, is often for your doctor to do a rectal examination. They may actually do what's called a rectovaginal examination, where they'll put a finger both in the rectum and the vagina at the same time. So if they're doing this, you need to know why they're doing it and because it's very awkward and uncomfortable. So really, your doctor is feeling in between the two layers to assess the thinness or thickness of the tissue, and they can also feel where that bulge is. What we're actually trying to do is also determine if there's anything else going on. So if the small bowel is pushing down from above, that's called an interoseal. Well, by doing this rectovaginal examination, they're able to determine if there's that other component to this posterior vaginal bulge, if it's not just the rectum. If that is the case, then that complicates the matters and may necessitate more or different types of surgical pair. Sometimes, if there is an interocil, even the movement of the small bowel can be felt in that sac, and that can be certainly a reason to have a repair of these areas. So the next thing being done during the rectal examination is we may have you try to tighten the sphincter muscle and, and to uh, assess that anal area. Sometimes there's even nerve damage that can cause muscles to be very weak in that area. And that is typically when you may start having that stool leakage. So after physical examination, we may consider other tests uh, to really fully evaluate the vaginal area. Sometimes x-rays of the pelvis of some sort can be helpful. And an x-ray with contrast material, and this is material that can show up on x-ray, that has been put into the rectal area can be helpful. You will be asked to have a bowel movement pushing out that contrast material, and this is called a defecography. Honestly, it's a terrible thing to have to go through. And personally, as I, as a surgeon who, who fixes these type of problems, I don't find that test very useful most of the time, so I don't put you through it. But other doctors may think that it's an important part of your workup of your problems, and so they may have you do that. Also, an MRI can be done in these types of situations and uh, can even be dynamic. And that means that they may have you bear down and take pictures with MRI uh, and uh, see the prolapse with that increased pressure. But because you're lying down and doing these things, it may still not uh, really show exactly what your problems are. 
There's a lot of other tests that can be uh, we can do, uh, but to be honest with you, pelvic physical examination is the most important thing to do. So if you like this video so far, hit the like button. It really helps with YouTube. And please subscribe, because if you miss any of my videos, who am I gonna talk to? Just give me a thumbs up and please comment because I want to answer your questions. So again, this video is really about you understanding what a rectocele is, how we figure that out, and how we counsel you on decreasing the risk of rectocele getting worse. Many patients come to see me and are having these types of problems, but they're also having diarrhea. Well, loose stool is a reason for having fecal incontinence, but a lot of times it's also a product of having severe constipation. Because often, when you're very constipated, fluid is going to build up and gather behind that obstruction. And, and when it makes its way around, you're having diarrhea. All that has to be controlled. So one of the most important things is increased fluid intake so that more fluid stays in the colon and your stool. But fiber use is really primary in that. The two best fibers, especially in the US, are Metamucil, and it has a trade, other trade names, but it's uh, psyllium husk. And the other is citrusel, which is methyl cellulose. These two fibers actually cause bulking of the stool, but at the same time, it also helps hold in the moisture so that it doesn't become a solid, difficult to pass hard stool. Importantly, with rectocele, there can be severe dysfunction of the colon itself, and that needs to be dealt with before any other thing, because even if you ultimately have surgery that just fixes the anatomy of the vagina, it doesn't fix the function of the colon. GI doctors may even help in this situation in trying to help you control uh, these issues. Uh, other treatments such as laxatives, uh, Miralax is commonly uh, used, and it can be very helpful in keeping the stool soft. Now, the next thing as far as management of these issues is just waiting. The fancy term for this is expectant management. The natural tendency over time, even if there's a little bit of dysfunction, is for a rectocele not to get a whole lot worse. Now, this especially is true if you try to do everything to solve the constipation issues. You may still have feelings of entrapment of the stool, but even just being able to reduce that by pushing in the vaginal area may make you feel a little bit more functional. The main thing is you're not harming yourself if you're actually reducing that area. You may actually, as you're trying to have a bowel movement, cause less long-term problems and less bulge. I think that I tend to reassess these types of problems later without intervening if you're just not too symptomatic. If you don't have all these other types of symptoms mentioned here, then there really isn't any need for surgical intervention at that time. So primary pessary use is another consideration. And I've talked about this in other videos, but the most common type of pessary is the ring pessary. And this uh, may help for some patients, but in my experience, a lot of times, the pessary sits kind of higher in the vaginal area, and a rectocele can be uh, quite low in the vaginal area. So it may not help a lot with rectocele, but if it does, it was worth trying. And the last non-surgical intervention is pelvic floor physical therapy. This is muscle training for the pelvic muscles to make them really stronger, and, but and it's very effective as there, if there is leaking of stool as well. So if you can strengthen those pelvic floor muscles, especially if you ultimately have surgery, you're only gonna be better for it. As I always say, physical therapy is not necessarily going to fix the torn tissues. And that is true. But it certainly can help strengthen the muscles that support those torn tissues. And it can be helpful even after surgery. So if ultimately you do have surgery, it may be very much more effective. Well, the main thing is don't despair. And as I've taught you in this video, there's a lot of things that you can do if you recognize the problem in yourself or have been told that you have a rectocele by your doctor. Don't be afraid of reducing or pushing back that rectocele in order to complete the bowel movement. You're not going to harm yourself, but also try to not to strain too much or lift very heavy objects. Just leave that to someone else. But also if you have constipation or diarrhea, definitely take fiber and possibly even Miralax can help. You have a consistent bowel movement, not being too hard or too soft. Those are some of the things that you can do right now to help your cell. Now, but if, if your doctor decides that you now need surgery because it's bad enough, that's what I'll tell you more about in the next video.
Well, hopefully you feel you learned something. And as always, I have enjoyed being here with you. I would love to help you solve your problems at Women's Healthcare Answers. Remember, this video is meant for information purposes only. Please consult your own healthcare provider, but it's okay to reference the information I give you.